Hey guys, welcome to a very epic episode because we are going to change the brakes on my 2013 Peugeot 408. This is everything you'll need for this job. The full list with more details are in the description. At least one jack stand and a hydraulic jack, copper NTCs or some grease, brake cleaner, a wire brush, penetrating oil, a mallet, silicone paste, thread locker, a 17mm socket, 7mm hex bit, T30 Torx bit, ratchets, breaker bars, a torque wrench, a flathead screwdriver, a C-clamp, gloves, your new brake pads and brake discs, a short bucket or box, about half a wheel's height, safety equipment, respirator and goggles, an E16 E-Torx socket, and a mat just to sit on. So before we can start working on the brakes, we need to remove the wheels and get the car up. So get your 17mm socket, fit it to your breaker bar, loosen the wheels, jack up the car, and get your car securely placed on the jack stand. If you're using a small hydraulic jack like I am, you want to make sure that the wheels on the jack are all pointing forwards because the jack will start moving as you jack up the car. Now we can take off the wheels and start working on the brakes. It's a good idea to put on your gloves now because things are going to start getting dirty. Okay, wait. Let's just see what we're working with first. That's the brake caliper. On the front and back are brake pads. And this is the brake disc. Here is my micrometer with DIY 3D printed pincers. I have a video on it here. And I'm going to show you how much the brake disc can wear. This is the old disc. And there's only 23.1 millimeters of disc left. Here's the new disc and there's 26.2 millimeters. So it's worn out 3.1 millimeters over 80,000 kilometers. Here's the old pad and the pad holding disc is about 6.4 millimeters and with the pad is 11.4. So that's a pad thickness of 5 mm, which is still okay, but we have to change pads when we change the disc. Meanwhile, on the new pad, the mounting plate is 7mm thick and with the brake pad, it's 19mm thick. So the new pad is 12mm. Okay, it's time to start. So let's put on our safety equipment. Step 1 is to remove the retaining clip. So use your flathead screwdriver for this. Once it's out, turn the wheel so that you can access the back of the caliper. Now step 2, remove the guide pins. But before that, you have to remove the plastic caps. So use your flathead screwdriver again. Now use your 7mm hex bit to remove the guide pins. If they are stuck on too hard, just use a longer wrench. Out comes the top one. And there's the bottom one. As I remove these parts from the car, I like to arrange them on the ground next to me in the same way that it has to be put back into the car. So this guide pin is from the bottom and it goes on the bottom of this arrangement. Same goes with the retaining clip so you don't forget where each part goes. Now for step 3, removing the calipers with the brake pads. But it's not going anywhere right now because the old disc has been worn down leaving a raised lip at the edges. So we need to compress the caliper piston which will give us some wiggle room to remove the calipers. Just keep compressing the piston until you are able to wiggle the caliper. Then just remove the C-clamp and before you remove the caliper, 
make sure to put the bucket next to the caliper first because you don't want the caliper to dangle from the brake lines. With the caliper removed, you should be able to remove the outside brake pad without any problem. The inside brake pad is actually attached to the caliper. So just pull that off and you're good to go. Now you get to remove the caliper bracket which is held in place by two mounting bolts. These are the tightest bolts of the whole job so make sure you use your breaker bar with the E16 E-Torx socket. And that's the top mounting bolt. Now I can just slide the mounting bracket right off. Step 5. Remove the brake discs. There are only two small Torx screws holding the disc in place. So just get your T30 Torx bit and undo those screws. Unfortunately, even after you undo these screws, the disc is probably stuck onto the wheel hub. So grab your mallet and start hammering. Now that the disc is out, you should take the opportunity to clean the hub with some penetrating oil, wire brush, and brake cleaner. Okay, we got everything off. Now for step 6, preparing the new brake disc. Some discs come with an oily film to protect from rust, and some discs don't. So make sure you check with your brake disc instruction before you clean it up with brake cleaner. You have to clean the disc on both sides. Step 7. Clean up the brake calipers. This will make sure that your new brake pads don't get caught in excess brake dust. Make sure to wear your respirator while you're doing this because brake dust is very bad for health. Okay, now we get to start putting things back together. First, cover your wheel hub in grease or anti-seize so that the disc is easy to remove next time. Next, insert the retaining screws and tighten them up to 7 pound feet. Now we can reinstall the caliper bracket. Before we do that, take the mounting bolts and add some tread locker. Hold the mounting bracket in place and insert the mounting bolts. Tightening the mounting bracket bolts is done in two stages. If your bolts come with washers, you want to first tighten to 24 pound feet and then tighten a further 45 degrees. If they don't come with washers, first tighten to 66 pound feet and then tighten a further 45 degrees. Step 10. Install the new pads and reinstall the caliper bracket. So the outer brake pad goes on real easy. Just slide it on. Make sure the friction material is facing the disc and ensure it's free to move. The inside brake pad needs a bit more work because the new disc and pads are so much thicker, there's no room to put anything in. So we are going to use a C-clamp to compress the brake piston back into the piston chamber. That gives us a lot more room. So if you have a slightly larger C-clamp, you can put your old brake pad in between the C-clamp and the brake piston which will let you compress it evenly. Push the piston all the way into the chamber. And then, get the new brake pad and just slide it in. Now you can just slide the caliper back into position. The next step is to secure the calipers in place using the guide pins. Now you're supposed to get new guide pins every time you reinstall your caliper. But a new set of pins for one side of your wheels costs 300 plus ringgit while the whole set of brake discs and pads costs 300 plus as well. So it doesn't make much sense and apparently even the mechanics don't do it. So just get the old pins, clean them up, lubricate them with silicone paste and you can start installing them again. 
The guide pins have to be tightened down to 23 pound feet. Then just pop the caliper guide pin caps back on. Lastly, reinstall the retaining clip. Um, there's no tips I can give you for this, just fidget around with it until it goes in. It can be quite a pain. And that's it, we're done! Except we're not really done. We need to put on the wheel, hand tighten it, lift the car up slightly so we can remove the jack stand, lower the car back down, and then tighten the wheel bolts. The wheel bolts get tightened to 74 pound feet and then slip on the boat covers. So before you drive, you need to prime up your brakes. So the first time you press it down, it's going to go all the way down like you have no brakes. And as you pump, you get firmer and firmer. And now you need to take a drive, a few hundred km, just slowly, slowly do light braking, and you're good to go. Bye!